Good morning, Mrs. Rennie. Good morning, Mr. Palfrey. It's a fine morning. It is, it is. So I doubt I shall see my trouble. Not today. What should we find today, Mrs. Rennie? A yogi or a commissar? Which would you prefer? Somewhere in between. What Kirstler called one of the more sedate human attitudes. How dull, Mr. Palfrey. Dullness is a condition of stability, Mrs. Rennie. And we esteem stability. Oh, yes. Coffee or tea this morning? Lemon tea. The astringency will aid concentration. Mr. Fox will be here at any moment. Morning. Morning. Colonel Point, Mr. Palfrey. Got your pass? Good morning, Mr. Fox. Morning. Yes? Mr. Fox is here, Mr. Palfrey. Thank you. Please ask him to come in. Good morning. Do sit down. Will you have coffee? Oh, thanks. Don't you find it strange? No windows? In this room, it's the interior windows that matter. The windows of the soul. What Blake called the eyes. William Blake, of course, not George. How do you know I have my coffee black? Oh, I expect when you were here last. I've only been here once. I didn't have coffee. You don't miss a thing. Which is why you're on this job. Now, tell me. Uh, do sit down. What happened yesterday? You met our friend? I picked him up at exactly the same place at exactly the same time. Well, what did he do when he left Waterloo? Took a cab to the Embankment Gardens. Was he in a hurry? Can't be more than ten minutes to walk it. He got off on the bridge, went down the steps and sat on a bench. That was uh, 20 to 11. He sat there until noon. Then he got up, went back to Waterloo. He got the 12.25 back to Reading. Straight back? Nothing else? He was back in Aldermaston after lunch. Surely he picked something up, or left it, or met somebody. Nobody. Nothing. He did nothing. <laughs> nothing happened. Improbably uneventful. I was there. Why does a defence scientist suspected of treason come to London and sit on a bench by himself and then go home? It was Tuesday. The second Tuesday of the month. Last time it was the Festival Hall, all the way to London, for a cup of coffee in the cafeteria. He sat around for 45 minutes, then went home. And that was the second Tuesday of the month. He has a standing arrangement to make himself available at a rotor of places on the second Tuesday of every month. 
Well, and last time he also carried a copy of the New Statesman. You'd say that clinches it? <laughs> Maybe when he has it, it's safe to make contact. But it wasn't safe, was it? You were there. He didn't know that, I'm but sure of it. They didn't make contact, did they? Well, no. So perhaps we got it all wrong. It was a dangerous signal. Keep away. It's possible. I wonder what could have alerted him. He didn't act as if anything had alerted him. But if I may turn him. Miss Mandy Rice Davis around, he wouldn't, would he? What's your opinion of Slade? And so far it's all suspicion and circumstantial, no hard evidence. What do you think? Well, what does your intuition tell you about Slade? I can't work it out. His manner, his London trips, these mysterious assignations with nobody. Nothing gels. And yet, I can't believe he's working for Moscow. All the indications are that he is, wouldn't you say? Maybe that's what we're supposed to believe. A lot of suspicion and not much evidence. So, uh, back to the drawing board. Talking of things not gelling, <coughs> What do you make of this amusing piece? The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Two, five, nine, two, one. Six, nine, seven, five, two. Eight, zero, one, five, one. Nine, four, two, seven. One, three, five, nine, one, six. It's five of five numerals. One of those funny little stations in East Germany kept broadcasting it. The lady sounded quite bored by the time she repeated it for 30 minutes. The chaps at Cheltenham recorded it for us. Have they analysed it yet? Oh, you know, GCHQ, they never tell one, but I think they have a good idea what it means. And what's that? My guess is that it's some sort of alert. A cautionary message seems likely. Why sections say that if the other side start broadcasting messages like that out of schedule, it usually means a flap, some sort of emergency. I see. Like having to warn someone over here hurriedly. Slade. Could be anybody, I suppose. I'm afraid codes are a bit beyond me. I find the... Uh, Crossword tough enough. Are you any good at these things? <laughs> Moderately. Now, what about today's? It's um, five across, seven letters. More headless without bends, we hear. I can't crack it. Well, more headless. Without bends. Straighter without the head. Straighter without the S. I think the word you want is traitor. Dear me. Traitor? Couldn't see it for looking. Right there in front of me. <laughs> oh, my dear fellow. You have hidden talents. It may be you should uh, try your luck with that radio message. I'll leave it to the chaps at Cheltenham if you don't mind. At the moment, I've got enough on my hands. Can I be of any help? I mean, if you've got problems, that's what I'm here for, you know, to listen. Thank you. I appreciate that. Well? Well, when the time comes... I think it has come. Don't you find the greatest burden is one can't confide, no one one can talk to? That's the job. All part of it. Well, feel free. With me, you can relax, speak your mind, get anything you want off your chest. Or maybe you want to think about it, take a time. I'm not sure I understand. Of course you do. More copy. Uh, no, thank you. <laughs> I don't blame you, it's not very good. It's a lot better than the stuff we used to get at Leckenfield House. Oh, yes, Leckenfield House. Good old days. They were the good old days, weren't they? Not that long ago. A million light years away, believe me. It's different now. We're no longer gentlemen. Hadn't noticed. You will. Yeah. I suppose you're right. Things have changed. <coughs> you.
You miss them, do you? Thank you. You miss them, do you? Uh, miss who? The old crowd. There's still quite a lot of them about, aren't there? I sometimes bump into a familiar face. They're largely upstairs now, of course, or in registry. Really? Yeah, that's where most of the old Talking of, sorry, talking of registry, you've been making yourself busy, haven't you? Yeah, mm. I got uh, Slade's file out. Oh, he has Snow White clearances, not a stain, I can tell you. <laughs> I suppose one could say that makes him suspicious. Did you know his daughter's one of the green immunilateralists? She took part in a demo. One demo. Sat in the mud and howled like a banshee, then went back home. That hardly makes Daddy a security risk. No. No, I think I, I saw somewhere... You, you were a boy scout at school. You know, the scouts are rated a subversive organisation by the KGB? Yeah. We're not chasing boy scouts. No. So you'll have to do better than that if you want to nail Slade. But uh, I wasn't talking of Slade anyway. I'm told you asked to see another file in registry. That's right. Yours? Correct. But you know it is strictly against regulations for an officer to look at his own service file. I was curious. Why? You must have had good reason. Maybe. You better tell me. All right. Since you make a point of it. I wanted to see if they'd added anything to my file. They? Oh, come on. Such as what? I'm not sure, really. I wondered if I'd been imagining things. That sounds mysterious. Imagining what? It's just a feeling, a sort of instinct I've got that somebody's been keeping an eye on me. Why on earth should anyone do that? Oh, maybe it's the new system. Perhaps there's a spot check going on. Like I said, I'm not sure. Maybe I have been imagining things. I don't know. I wanted to make certain. And did you find anything? Yeah. The file was not available to me. They quoted regulations. And reported it to me. Never mind. One thing interests me, though. What did you think could have been added to your file? How would I know? Take a guess. Doesn't matter. I've got the answer now anyway, haven't I? What do you mean? You've given it to me sitting here. I don't need to look at the file now. You seem a bit edgy. If you don't mind me asking you questions. Well, it's your job. Mind you. I don't know why you should be asking me. You don't know what it's about? No. But, uh, it's beginning to get interesting. Room 104, Jordan speaking. Anyway, it makes a change from following Dr. Slade around. Good. Excellent. Glad you feel pretty relaxed about it all. Used not to be like this, of course, as we were saying. But times change. Alas, you have to get somewhere. Uh, no, I just wonder what the time was, that's all. I'm glad you're not in a hurry, because there's something I want you to see. Play the Stockholm tape, please. Wilco, also, GCHQ has just been on. Do you want me to say? We've no secrets here. The Quick Brown Fox. They've cracked it. Thank you. Keep it. Roll the tape now. Turn your chair around so you can see. <laughs> I don't suppose anyone's told you about the Americans' little windfall. No, of course not. They haven't been spreading it about. They're debriefing Gorski. He came over to them a few days ago, just walked into their Stockholm embassy. Would you believe it? Good of the Yanks to let us see it. Now, what about the man in London? I've already told you. Tell us again. We have a man in their security service, D section. You dealt with him? Me? No, he was too important. Who controls him? They never told me. But the files were kept from us. What's his name? <laughs> you think they would tell us? I'm drop off you. The new man knows. What Director's about... letter. Excuse me? Nobody else. What about the information he gives? As I said, he's a member of this section of SIS. He keeps us posted about their countermeasures, who they are onto, that they're targets. Interesting, isn't it? Isn't there any more? Oh, of course. You want to go on? Very much. How does he communicate with Moscow? Usual ways. We shall want exact details later. Yes. Now, I appreciate you don't know his real name. But he must have been referred to by a code name. A code name, yes. What is it? Derek. Who picked it? How should I know? How long has Derek been working for you? Peter? Oh, a long time. 
Months, years? Years. I don't know when he started. He must have some idea. I'm tired. I, I would like a drink. OK. We'll take ten. Fascinating. Isn't it? I always had my suspicions about Gorski. Really? What about? That he tried to buy his way over to the Yanks one day with a load of junk. How interesting. Why did you suspect that? You know, things one hears. Gorski living it up. Oslo, Warsaw, Rome, wine, women and dollars. Hmm. I'm surprised the KGB had trusted him this long. So you think he's trying to sell the Americans a bill of goods? No, Gorski's just the type. Wants the good life in the West but knows what the price is. Names. Anybody's names. You seem very well informed about Gorski. I studied him. He was in Frankfurt the same time I was. Ah, glad you reminded me. The DG's seen the tape. He thinks there's something in it. And you do, too. The Americans are impressed. No, yeah, they would be if it vilifies us. So impressed they sent us the cassette. No use for them. Where is Comrade Gorski now? The Yanks are looking after him. Yeah, I bet they are. What about Derek? You think Gorski made it all up? No, I wouldn't say that. I always thought there might be somebody. Somewhere. Like Derek, working on the inside. Wouldn't be the first time. Any idea who it could be? Actually, uh, we both know. Don't we? Anyway, the chap we're after is Dr. Slade. I think our wires have got crossed. My fault. You mean, uh, Derek's just a red herring? Oh, come, come, my dear chap. As you said, we both know who Derek is. Who do you suppose he is? You're Derek. Do you mind if I smoke? Go ahead. I've been dying for one. You know, they're dead right about you. I don't follow. What they say about you. Who are they? Around the corner in head office. Just gossip, of course. Even so... Tell me. They say that you're a past master at covering things up, that you've got behind that desk by being the most dangerous man in the service. Dangerous? Because there's no defence against you. Once you put a finger on somebody, they're finished. Doesn't matter, you've got the wrong man. You said covering things up. You know what I mean. What exactly am I covering up? Who Derek is. <laughs> I see. Fascinating. You are a remarkable man, Michael. So tell me, who is Derek? Everything in here is being recorded, isn't it? Of course, every word. Are you sure you want me to say? My dear chap, why do you think we're all here? To cover things up, I'd say, to protect the inside man. I'm intrigued, and who might that be? Are you sure you don't want to switch this tape off? No, you just go ahead, tell me who it is we're all looking for. You, Mr. Palfrey. You're Derek. Well, deuce? I suppose so. Except it hasn't got us anywhere, right? Depends who we're talking about. One of us being Derek. I thought we were discussing the good Dr. Slade. Did you really? Personnel tell me you'll put in for leave. Yeah, I thought I'd take a couple of weeks off next month. I could do with a holiday. Oh, couldn't we all? Going abroad? Somewhere in the sun, I hope. Away from it all. But you usually take your holiday later in the year. Personnel didn't object. 
Leaves the Slade business a bit in the air, doesn't it? Oh, don't worry about that. It'll all be tied up by then. Your confidence does you credit. Sudden decision, was it? Of a holiday, I mean. Look, if it isn't convenient, I can put it off, of course. The department comes first. Never doubt it. You know that. No, you've got a lot of leave entitlement piled up. That was another reason. I thought I'd cash it in. Absolutely. Well, it's convenient. The department must pay you back everything it owes you. Yes? Oh, yes, fine. Yes, now, please. I have a visitor. No, stay. I should have said we have a visitor. Come in. Will you need us, sir? No, I think we'll see him on our own. Yes, sir. How is the flight? Fine. He snored all the way. Ah, thank you. Hello, Major. Hello. I'm the I man... I know who you are. This is, um, Mr. Fawkes. Michael, I'm sure I don't have to introduce Major Gorski. Do sit down, Major. Thank you. Can I get you anything? No, no. Coffee, no. lemon tea, something stronger, <laughs> vodka. I have a splendid Polish Viborova, 100 proof. Very kind, but I need nothing. Michael? Uh, not for me. You sure? Mm. Oh, very well. Anything you want, Major, say the word. Thank you. I am well looked after. Good. It's really like a little reunion, isn't it? For you two, I mean. Please? Your paths have crossed. That's right, Michael. You remember Frankfurt. You know what I was doing there. I know what your official assignment was. Ah. Now I understand. Very attractive. We owe Sonia a lot. It's not every day that a secretary at the Soviet liaison mission in Frankfurt turns double agent. Two days after her last contact with us, she was killed. Hit and run outside that ugly opera house. Quite tragic. Safer to kill her there than drag her screaming back to Moscow, I suppose. It could have been an accident. You were her control, Michael, her contact in Frankfurt. You believe that? Oh, no, not no, really, but sure. What do you think, Major? I wasn't there. I left Frankfurt before it happened. They never traced the car. If I had a suspicious mind, I might surmise that someone tipped off her people that she was supplying us with information. Oh, it's possible. I'm glad you agree. F section thinks so. <laughs> it's a little <laughs> like our service. You people do not trust each other. <laughs> Trusted anyone, we wouldn't be doing this job. My friend, we have much in common, you and I. Oh, how did we come to be talking about poor Sonia? Of course, Frankfurt, do forgive me. Um, I think we ought to break for lunch soon. This afternoon we can get down to a proper debriefing. Anything you want to put on the agenda, Michael? What about Slade? What a good point. I'd almost forgotten. Yes, Major, when we get down to it later, you may be able to fill us in about Dr. Benjamin Slade of the Atomic Weapons Research Establishment at Aldermaston. Oh, I've never heard of such a man. That's him. And why should I know this man? Because there are suspicions that he may be working for your masters. I beg your pardon, your late masters. No, this has not come to my knowledge. Uh, if he is working for Moscow, uh, you would have heard. Well, I don't know everything, of course. Sometimes only code names, like Derek. But but a contact at Aldermaston, yes, I, I would hear of a man in such a place. And you've never heard of Slade? I've said no. Anybody like him? I think we should leave it till after lunch. Major Gorski must be tired. Of course. Thank you, yes, I would like a rest. It was a long journey. Our guest deserves a little break. We'll have him back later. I'm sure he's going to tell us a lot of very useful things, aren't you, Major? I will try to be helpful. I think I know what you want. I'm sure you do. We'll see you later.
exhausting business. Sitting around talking. You tired, Michael? Gets a bit much, doesn't it? I mean, the whole bloody business. Deceiving, cheating, twisting, lying, trusting nobody, not even oneself. You must find this work very difficult. Why? Because in this job, one needs to be a professional disbeliever. A strongly held belief can be very inconvenient, gets in the way. You're wrong, you know. It can be a great strength in this work. You find it so. I know so. Magnificent, isn't it? Perhaps you're right. Marilyn Grammar School, Cambridge, second class honours modern languages, short service commission, station Berlin, bachelor, does not seem to have attracted a circle of close friends, keeps to himself, no permanent liaison. Here we are, converted to Roman Catholicism. That was, oh yes, 1975, I see. You uh, wanted to see your file, Michael. This is part of it. Well. Doctors look at x-rays, I look at files. <laughs> Yours is very informative. Aren't you hungry? Not particularly. I think we ought to get something to eat. Recharge the batteries. I'd rather finish. Michael? I made it a firm rule not to skip meal breaks. That's the way to get ulcers. And an intelligence man with ulcers is like a boxer with a broken hand. Back at 2.30. You mean, uh, go out? Well, I shouldn't risk the canteen. <laughs> yes, get a breath of fresh air while you're at it. Clear the head. Alone? I'd like to come along, but I've got paperwork. It'll have to be a sandwich for me. But no reason why you shouldn't go. Sure. Heavens, man, why not? Are you going to take the first plane to East Berlin or ask for sanctuary at the Russian embassy? <laughs> of course not. Well, then. 2.30, all right? Has he gone? I'll be with Mr. Kilpeck. Whatever happens, I want to know immediately. Aren't you taking a hell of a chance letting him go round in the middle of his interrogation? I'd be tempted to make a run for it. There is a risk. A calculated one. You know, he just doesn't look it. Well, don't you agree? What precisely is a traitor expected to look like? You know what I mean? Of course you do. It would make my job a lot easier if you could tell me. No, you're right, of course. It's wishful thinking. Fawkes is our man. That's not wishful thinking. Good. And you're going to get him to admit it? Of course. But if you don't, it's a useless exercise. We've made too many mistakes in the past. I haven't. Did I ever tell you that at one time they had doubts about you? 
Really? They got quite bothered about little bits and pieces. Used to work late at Curzon Street, came in a couple of times at weekends, walked home from the office by curious routes. Did I? Do you remember Carter, insecurity? He got a positive B in his bonnet about you. Became terribly suspicious because you bought books of poetry in backstreet bookshops. <laughs> he was convinced it was to work out some kind of code. I didn't know Carter had such a vivid imagination. Yes, he was an idiot. Still, you should have seen the circumstantial brief he built up. But it's still on my file, I suppose. Oh, it's dead and forgotten. Dead and forgotten. I'm relieved to hear it. Glass of wine? Or will that blunt your perception? One glass, I think. We're almost there, anyway. You sound confident? I am. No, Valley. Near the Moselle. Nice. Flowery. Some fish eggs. It's a uh, lump fish, not sturgeon. Poor man's caviar. <laughs> Help yourself. That's very refreshing. So now tell me, what are you going to do with him when he returns? Finish it. Get off the line. I have to see you. It's not possible. You don't understand. There's only a couple of hours left. It's life or death for me. Very well. Covent Garden. The usual place. Half an hour. I'll be waiting. For God's sake, be there. Please tell Mr. Palfrey the Hampstead number just received a call. Porks, he's made contact. Covent Garden, the usual place. Half an hour. I'll be waiting. For God's sake, be there. We intercepted that call just over 15 minutes ago. We're too late. Not at all. I've got five people there. Doing what? Waiting. But we don't know where the devil they're meeting. The usual place. What's the usual place? You know what a labyrinth Covent Garden is. You haven't a chance, man. At the bottom end of Covent Garden is Maiden Lane. In Maiden Lane, there is a Catholic church. Fawkes has, in recent months, become something of a churchgoer. He goes to confession there. I think we'll be in time.
The quick brown fox couldn't come. He sent me. A confession. You weren't supposed to call. You disobeyed instructions. It's too late, they know. I have to go back very soon. There isn't much time. Tell me everything, quickly. Sorry, Uncle A. You must have been right on time. I do apologize. Doesn't matter. Got everything you want? Yes, thank you. Well, this shouldn't take much longer. Sit down, Michael. Sit down. Have you decided where you'll be going? Going? On leave. Have you made any plans? What about Slade? Oh, I forget Slade. That... That's all sorted out. Since when? We've got Dr. Slade tied up. Don't worry. No. Think of yourself now. Here. This might interest you. Read it aloud. Read it. Discontinue operations, break all contact, cease activity. I told you Cheltenham had deciphered the code. Yes, I know. Well, Michael? <sighs> Obviously, somebody's been compromised and they're trying to warn him. Absolutely. Any idea who it is? Derek, who else? Wonder if he got the message. Of course you did, Michael. Oh, dear. Thought you'd given up on that. The thing that surprises me is that you've never asked me once. Asked what? Why? Why you're the one who's sitting there. Why you, a trusted servant of the Crown, is being subjected to this. Why on earth should I pick on you? Aren't you curious? Of course I'm curious. It's the understatement of the year. I'm angry. I'm puzzled. I'm appalled. What's the use? I know the section. Once your car's marked, that's it. But you haven't bothered to ask the reason. I find that fascinating. Oh, you tell me, of course. Sure, you'd reveal it all. Your sources, your informers, lay it all on the table. Oh, come on. There's no point. That's why. I'm sorry you feel that way. I was hoping you'd demand to know. I thought you'd jump up and say, what's all this about? I would, if I was accused of treason. I don't think I would have remained as cool as you. I'm damn sure I would have asked what the devil it's based on. And that omission makes me guilty. No, of course not. I find it interesting, that's all. Listen. A few months ago, we began intercepting these little jumbles of morse. They didn't mean a thing at first. Look, I thought you that said this please, wouldn't take much longer. Uh, do sit down. <sighs> then we picked up other little snippets. A curious remark at a cocktail party. Somebody knew something they shouldn't know. Never mind. Then one of our little jobs aborted. The other side seemed to know all about it. And gradually, a common denominator emerged. Guess what it was? Derek. Right, first time. One way or another, he had been privy to these things. Interesting. But who was Derek? Ah. GCHQ got a partial message on the Morse readings. The Americans picked up a couple of hints. And maybe Derek also got a little careless. Derek went to Frankfurt on a job. And would you believe it? Our friend Gorski arrived there too. Very careless indeed. And poor Sonia had her unfortunate accident. Isn't it all rather circumstantial? Oh, absolutely. You couldn't hang a dog on that. And that's it? Not quite. Dr. Slade was put under surveillance. Derek was given the case. 
He was told that Slade was suspected of passing secrets from Aldermaston to Moscow Central. And you know, a very curious thing happened. We picked up a message from Derek to Moscow, checking if Slade was in fact one of their spies in England. And Moscow replied that they didn't know anything about Slade. Derek was in a real spot, wasn't he? Here was SIS telling him that Slade was suspected of being a Soviet agent, and the Soviets saying that they'd never heard of him. He was puzzled. You were puzzled, weren't you? In this room, remember, you kept asking Gorsky if he knew anything about Slade. Had he ever heard of Slade or anybody like him? You kept pressing Gorsky. You kept at it because you wondered if you were being double-crossed, if Moscow no longer trusted you. Will you need me much longer? Do come in and meet your shadow, Dr. Slade. Michael, I don't suppose you've ever seen Dr. Slade close up. Take a good look. We borrowed him from M.O.D. to do a little play acting for us. To lay the bait and see if you'd rush to your Soviet friends about him. I see. What a waste of taxpayers' money. I'm sorry you've wasted your time. And mine. I wouldn't call it a waste of time. Mm. Do sit down, Doctor. He's smiling. The bastard's smiling. Are you sure we've got the right man, sir? If you were innocent, would you be smiling? It's finished, Michael. They've written you off. Cease activity, discontinue operation. They've written off Derek. What's that got to do with me? Do you play chess, Doctor? Uh, sometimes. Would you agree that a good chess player who finds himself in a hopeless situation resigns with dignity? Yes. You've played a very good game for a long time. But now you're finished. It's over. Give in, Michael. It's mate. All right. Now I'll tell you something. The one thing you need, you haven't got. An admission, a confession. You've got a lot of suspicion and little bits and pieces. And you know there's a Russian spy in the section code named Derek, but the one thing you can't prove is that I am Derek. Or that Derek is me. Play back your tapes, read your transcripts, check them till you're blue in the face. You won't find a shred of evidence that would convict a blind monkey. You know damn well you've lost. That's what this little inquisition's all about, isn't it? To get me to say mea culpa. I admit my guilt. No jury on earth would convict me without a confession. Go on. If you think you've got me, arrest me. Charge me. <laughs> I've never admitted anything. And I'm not going to, because I've got nothing to admit. You have failed. you got nothing. Do you hear me? Nothing. Every trick in the book and it's got you nowhere. I admit nothing. <laughs> oh, sorry, old man. I think you know the rest. It's not possible. It's all there, Michael. On tape. Everything you told him. Everything. Never. It can't be. The quick brown fox, Michael. He sent you. I'm afraid we've been tapping your contact's phone for ten months. You knew. <sighs> you bloody well knew, and you played this game. What for? To torture me? You enjoy it? We needed an admission from you. I must say you went into great detail. We're grateful. Well, you can't use this recording as evidence against me. It was tricked out of me. I wouldn't say that. It was a fully voluntary statement given to an officer of the security service. He'll swear to it. You no, know, damn well, that's a lie. The tape doesn't say so. There may even be a caution on it soon. Oh, yes. Very deceitful, very underhand. You would know, wouldn't you? What now? Well, Forty years, I should think. Thirty, if you're lucky. Unless... Well, 
You could be useful, Michael. Carrying on as you are, but working for us. Passing information. Disinformation, you mean? It shouldn't be difficult for you, switching sides. If I do? No charges, no trial, no prison. If I don't? All right. All right. I knew you would. Why did he do it? Catholic. A convert. Every man seeks his own salvation. There are bishops who say better red than dead. Priests who back terrorists. They're merely a means to an end. And who's to say they're wrong? After all, God does work in mysterious ways. Please. I hope you've enjoyed your visit over here. It has been interesting. You fly back in the morning? Yes, to uh, Andrews Air Force Base. I shall have much work to do with the Americans. Tell me, Major, if I wanted to pass a little tip to your late employers in Moscow, do you know people who could do it? There are ways. The name of a person passing them information. Information? Disinformation. You know what they would do. Of course. Poor Derek. Poor Michael. What a pity. Beware of today.